Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Simcic. Um, Mr. Simcic uh, wishes a dialogue, not a monologue, so you are welcome uh, to ask him. You may ask uh, in German or in English, but uh, please using the cordless uh, um, microphone. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I'm, I'm very sorry to come with a very critical question, I think. Yes, um, I would have preferred to not ask it as a first question, but there was no other, I guess. <laughs> I was, um, by coincidence today, sitting in a lecture by um, Simon Scheich on instituting. Yes. <laughs> and he was um, bringing up this example of Documenta 14. Um, <laughs> about um, Documenta having bought, or, or the Bundeskulturstiftung, I believe, having bought an, a, a building where you have set up office, and you're renting out um, one of the floors to, uh, to the Athens Biennial team, oh. or to the Athens Biennial, which within this context of instituting and of participation and of, of, of being a guest and uh, not being a host, to me sounds very weird. <laughs> yeah, what you said sounds really weird because it's based on uh, complete, uh, you know, uh, misunderstanding of and lack of knowledge about the situation. Oh, would, you, would you then comment yeah, on, the, the this, on this? Yeah, the situation is the following. it's really interesting Yeah, yeah to sure, me. sure, sure. But, you know, I'll, you I'll be brief. I, I don't think I need to go into into you know uh, financial details here or such stuff but i can tell you that we were looking for an office and we found a building um, in the center of arens which seemed to be uh, all right and there were two floors in the building and we are using one floor and the second floor you know the upper floor would have been basically empty during the first months of making and this was a moment which kind of inspired me to talk to Aten, uh, athens biennial organizers uh, xenia and, and Pocayo, and uh, ask them whether they would be interested in sharing the space with us because we, <clears throat> we were discussing previously that we're going to have a collaboration anyway because we don't want to you know, arrive and kind of ignore the fact that the Biennial has been there for 10 years, like based on you know, what, what these people, these two individuals have, have done there. And we talk a little bit and they, they said that they kind of like their old office, which was also quite nearby, but in fact it was in a rather, you know, dreadful place. The circumstances around were dire and they kind of got used to, to it and um, worked there for many years. But uh, they welcomed our invitation and they are now sharing with us the rent of this building. So there is a proportional, you know, division of the, of the rent between the two organizations. We are not renting it to Athens Biennial, you know, we are, I mean, <laughs> So, you know, I appreciate Simon Sheikh's zeal to teach, um, you know, about instituting, and I should rather speak to him, not to you, because you merely transmitted his, um, you know. But I think, you know, we are trying to, to institute, and, and, and he's telling us that we institute in the wrong way, because what, we make profit on real estate in Athens? I mean, wake up. Okay. Ja, vielleicht kann ich meine Frage gleich anschließen. Äh, mit, wichtig finde ich, mit wem Sie dort in Athen dann zusammenarbeiten auch, also mit welchen Gruppen, Personen oder Institutionen. Ja. Ähm, ich halte diese zusammen, also das, was Sie vorgetragen haben, hat mich sehr beeindruckt, muss ich sagen. Auch der Ansatz, den Sie machen, Athen ist ein Melting Pot der, auch der Probleme, also ein Brennpunkt der von Tag zu Tag im Moment aktuell ist und in der Diskussion ist. Die Documenta ist eine, für mich eine ganz wichtige äh, Möglichkeit, auch auf ganz anderer Ebene als auf, nur auf Diskussion oder auf intellektueller Ebene, auf Gesprächen etwas zu verbinden und etwas zu vermitteln. Ich selber war das erste Mal bei der Documenta 6, 1977, und habe heute noch die Installation von Josef Beuys, die Honigpunkt 
Pumpe am Arbeitsplatz in Erinnerung, sehr nahe sogar, in Erinnerung und äh, habe, verbinde damit sehr viel. Äh, ich verbinde damit einen Organismus, nicht nur einen menschlichen, sondern äh, einen, äh, ja, einen Organismus einer Gesellschaft oder vielleicht auch einen Organismus Europas, der in unterschiedlichen Elementen zusammenarbeitet und äh, das in solcher Form darstellbar ist, ist natürlich einmalig gewesen für mich, aber ich hoffe mir auch, dass von der jetzigen 14. Dokumenta äh, so eine Honigpumpenfunktion vielleicht ausgehen kann, die auch emotional sehr stark berührt, die äh, auf anderer Ebene bewegt, als es nur die Diskussion überhaupt ermöglichen kann, mal abgesehen von dem, was sich bei den Institutionen abspielt. Die Frage war, mit wem arbeiten Sie zusammen? Ich erinnere mich. Well, <clears throat> there are different kinds of uh, instit institutions and different reasons for approaching them. Um, and I'm talking about Athens because we are here in the Centrum Modernis Griechenland, so this <clears throat> will be more about um, Athens, but we are adopting a similar approach in Kassel. We, we don't consider, you know, there are no two different methodologies for dealing with, you know, we try to, to address the situation on, in, 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 a, in, uh, in sim using similar categories and uh, our approach is structurally similar in both cities. Uh, there are significant dif differences mainly in size and temperature, but we can you know, neglect those. There are social structures that, that, that can be considered in terms of similarity or, or equality. In Athens, as I said, we are interested in uh, collaboration with public funded institutions because we believe that they are you know, the, the, the core of, of, of the society. So society has to, as again Michel Foucault famously said, uh, you know, be, be defended one has to defend the, the society in a way. And institutions which uh, have e uh, rather evil connotations lately can be, can be seen also as uh, institutions of, of that society. And therefore, I, I think we're going to have uh, a collaboration with, with um, several, um, let's say, state um, museum which cannot open for some reasons for a very long time. Uh, the, the, the EMST, uh, the uh, Greek Museum for Contemporary Art in the former building of the Braverai Fix in Sigur Street. And then we're going to be working with, uh, hopefully with a, I'm, I'm saying hopefully, it's all in the making. We've made approaches. There is an interest from our partners, but how it's going to end, we don't know. But the second institution would be the um, uh, Odeon Athenon, which is the uh, mu music conservatory on Rigilis Street, also in the city center. And the third institution will be art school. So as you see, we have two schools, like art school with a sort of exhibition hall in, in Piraeus Street. And then we have a music school, which also has performing arts. And the third institution is a museum. So they are kind of paradigmatic, um, or par uh, they are cho choices motivated by the fact that these institutions are kind of par par paradigmatic for for the cultural production, the museum and the academy, and then the kind of context of performing arts and music in the conservatory. But then there are going to be a lot of other, um, let's say, organizations and individuals that we are going to be uh, working with. Like uh, one example is the magazine that we are going to publish as of September this year. And this magazine is basically a transformed version of the magazine that was founded by Marina Fokidis in Athens a couple of years ago called South as a State of Mind. So we are, um, let's say, borrowing this title for the next two years. We are going to produce four issues with new editorial board and with a, with a totally different, um, let's say, range of authors, but sticking somehow to this premise of looking rather south than elsewhere, not geographically, but as a state of mind which then stands for different other understandings of what, you know, what's, what's the significance of the South to, today. So the, the first issue uh, that is dedicated to uh, the, the question of dispossession is going to be published in September this year. Um, so in, in this way, we are not creating a new title and bringing it to Athens and Castle, but we are taking a title created in Athens 
and we are giving it a sort of uh, different, let's say, shape, uh, inviting a range of international authors and hopefully, you know, bring, sort of carrying the magazine through the next two years that might be difficult years, so to say. And with hope that after 2017 it's going to continue maybe in this and, or maybe in, in completely different form. Uh, the magazine will be printed in English, right? With the content available in Greek and German uh, online. online. Because it's 200 pages, so we cannot put three languages in, in, in one magazine, because it's gonna, then it would turn into an almanac or something. So, yeah. Um, then there, are, uh, there is a number of ins institutions or, uh, let's say, extra-institutional uh, entities of which I should not speak because it's very, you know, um, it's confidential at the moment. The, the, these people don't wish to be exposed. Excuse me? Uh, yes, 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 I think so. No, no, not like this. Yes, we are, we are so far being given the credit of trust uh, by pretty much everybody we have spoken to, including rather radical organizations. Uh, and what's going to come out of this, we, we shall see in the making, because it's in the, so to say, it's in the pudding and not in the recipe, as, as I could describe it, for lack of better metaphor. I also have a question. Um, you, in your lecture, you brought the juxtaposition of the Athens Charter of Le Corbusier, some grey men in an ocean cruiser uh, going for a very, very short city stop to the city, coming back and developing abstract ideas about the future of urban reality. Mm -hmm. And I understood it as a juxtaposition, it's exactly what you don't want to do. Um, my question would be, how do you want to embed the documenta in the city? What will your interfaces to the city be? You talked about institutions, yeah. the Kalon uh, Technon, the art school, the Odeon, uh, and the new museum that is still closed, and some non-institutional players. But how will you create interfaces to the urban reality of the city, meaning, uh, what sort of smaller scale, for example, embedment, embedment could you have? Yeah. And that has to do with space, but that has to do also with time. Yeah. How long will you stay? Will you go there just for a short city stop? Or will you have the time to learn from Athens? And will you have the time to have a longer uh, uh, influence in the yes. development of the city? And not just be an incident? Yes. Yes, uh, thank you for this question. I uh, think I, I hinted at, at, at some um, answers already in my talk, but let me reiterate. Um, uh, we established an office in Athens not, for, uh, not in order to produce like administrative work, but because we needed a, a sort of uh, place from which to operate. And there is a team of uh, 10 people, and half of them are, are Greek and half of them international. Um, who in the internationals moved to Athens. Um, I also have a, you, you know, I have a uh, pied à terre in, in Athens where I basically spent most of my time if I'm not traveling. So uh, we started to live in this city in, in the beginning of this year. And uh, in terms of, uh, you know, which other um, entities would be addressed or um, invited to collaborate or ask for help, um, from our side, I would say that we, we are very much interested in schools because schools are very special in the, for, 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 if you look at the development of, of uh, modern architecture in Greece, school buildings are among the most radical ones, the, the ones from the 1930s. And they didn't come all, only as a kind of formal exercises in radical architecture, but they, they came with a certain vision during that period of Venizelos, I think, gov government. Um, let me conclude. Schools are physical locations. I mean, from, you know, some, some of them like um, um, 
Plato's were in the forest and Aristoteles was in a gym and then there was uh, another one of the, of the cynics in Kifisia. So they are physical locations and we, we want to look at these locations, not, not the ancient sites of the schools, but uh, let's say the, the models that were sort of established or drawn then. That's why we are interested in, for instance, academy or conservatoire. And we are also looking at these primary schools that were um, built in the 1930s, so they are fine examples of you know, Bauhaus architecture. They are in pretty good shape, surprisingly, after eight years. And uh, in some of these schools, there are teachers working who do amazing things. And we would like to make, uh, we basically would like to say that like, as Documenta, we totally support the work of these people who formed a kind of uh, network between different primary schools and not based on the criterion of whether they are modernist masterpieces or uh, you know, mediocre 1960s, 70s uh, school buildings, but based on a um, common belief that uh, children on a primary school level should be, let's say, taken out of the school, you know, taken out of that institution and be let's say, treated in a very different way, respecting their individuality, their wish to play, and, and so forth. So th this uh, first conversations that we had with people involved in that network show that there is a potential of, of conceiving an entirely different program of, um, let, I, I don't like these words, you know, program activities with children and so forth. So just approaching uh, children in a very different way, maybe thinking about something like space for childhood, you know, not a space, uh, as a, not a place, but space largely within the urban space. And Athens seemed to be a, a place in which there's absolutely little space for the childhood, except for, you know, rich suburbs of, of a certain kind, which have their own gated villas and so forth. So this is one example of a, of a, a kind of... Uh, non-institutional network that we have approached, and there are, there are others too. So um, this has to do with schools, but um, we are also going to uh, try to bring the visitors to Documenta, both Greeks and international visitors, to, uh, let's say, less frequently or never visited places in Athens in order to change their kind of mental pattern, because we believe that uh, visitors should be physically confronted with, with, with realities of the place, N not necessarily in a harsh way, but the physical experience, the embodied experience, is very important for an art exhibition. It's not an experience of looking at a you know, nice sequence of, of, uh, of pictures or objects in space. It's more about experiencing sites. So it's site-specific in a true sense of the word, while this word today, the site-specific in art, is very often uh, in, in a very um, trivialized way, um, turning into, some, into anything that is located in space. You know? So by, by the virtue of being in space, it is already site-specific. This is not true. Site-specificity is a political category, and it allows to uh, basically introduce a kind of alienation effect uh, onto the visitor or... Um, any you know, perceiving in individuals. So, so basically by locating the work in a, in a physical place that, it, that is off the beaten track or that is not belonging to an institutional context, we may hope for a different kind of revelation, let's say, or illum ill illumination in a, in a Benjaminian sense and not in a sense of gaining the absolute knowledge. But because I, I've went through these processes in Athens already several times, certain um, sites uh, left me completely breathless and they were not, you know, ruins and, uh, and more well-known bu buildings of Athens, but uh, places in all kinds of, uh, you, know, you know, in all different parts of the city that, that are just exceptional. For instance, for instance there is a, another school built in the, I believe, uh, 1950s, Zanetos. Um, uh, by Zanetos, it's a, it's a circular building that is like a huge sundial that was built by an architect who was imagining a kind of networked society before you know, computers were introduced as like personal devices. So he, he built this school, which is like a monument, in fact, um, that has never been inhabited in a way that it should have been inhabited. 
and it's not unproblematic because the, of the political position that Zanetos took at different other times. But uh, let's say this, this, this stories or uh, histories related to such places would be the material that we would like to work with and that we would like to make available through the work of artists who are going to be work, engaging with these sites uh, to, to, to the audience of Documenta 14 in Athens and in Castle. Yes? Question? Mm. Actually, on this side is the microphone. Oh, okay. Um, thank you very much for your, uh, well, for uh, presenting the document and thank you also for giving us, sharing more details about um, all the, about, pro about plans in progress. And um, I have a question which is derived from the title of the documenta, Learning from Athens. Yeah. And um, it made me actually wonder who is, um, who or what is the subject of the learning? Yeah, very good and um, it is, um, uh, and I understand it also as being the, um, the preparation motto of the documenta, it's a working title, so it guides, I assume, you can probably correct me in this the following years. And I'm also wondering if there is one thing that we have, so to say, in the contemporary art discourse has been very much processed is that there is no unified subject, there is no neutral subject. Mm. And um, in that sense, could you probably articulate it a little bit as you understand it, the subject of learning from Athens, articulate it, nuance it, deconstruct it? Yes, I mean, uh, this working title is a take on the known book by Venturi and Brown, um, Learning from Las Vegas, where it was used to, to kind of show that, you know, the, the understanding of architecture based on, on the kind of um, superiority of modernism needs a radical correction through learning from the vernacular and commercial architecture of, of Las Vegas Strip. Uh, but for me, this is less interesting. It's a, let's say, in, in my view, the working title that I propose is a, is a kind of detournement, like a, uh, the, the, the turning upside down of that, that kind of thinking, because it is actually by leaving the, as you say, subject uh, open or not, uh, uh, not, not, not pointed at uh, in that title, it's basically uh, about questioning the, the vector of, or the direction of this learning process. So it, it is more inspired by a phrase that, that you may find in, uh, in the writings of Gayatri Spivak uh, quite, quite frequently, which is, which is something uh, like learning to learn from below. Learning to learn from below. So, so the, when, when she speaks about the subaltern position and basically says that approaching the subaltern cannot be a step that is simple, that it should be a two-phase process. The first phase should, should be learning to learn. And in, in a very similar way in her conversation with Judith Butler, she's speaking about, uh, they are speaking about the, uh, the, the notion of the right to rights, you know, who has the right to have rights and in, in which way. So uh, this, this title is about that on one level. Uh, and on, on, on the other level, it is also, uh, I mean, of course it is a provocation because it is formulated at the moment when, as I said, you know, one side gives lessons to the other side. So this is a kind of contrarian position to that. So it has, it, it has many different meanings. And I think that uh, it also um, insists on the fact that, um, that uh, the issues of learning will be important in the development of the exhibition proper. So this is, this is a kind of uh, a device with which we want to learn and to work with artists towards the exhibition. And this process um, is already public uh, because there, ha there, there have been you know, appearances of different um, members of our curatorial team as, as well as, I mean, in Athens as well as in Kassel. So we are at the moment, uh, well, it has already begun in a way. There will be no waiting for a sort of big bang and then 100 days of exhibitions and then au revoir. I mean, we are already thinking about how to organize you know, the future. So it's not about uh, concluding the project and then next project. Not this way.
uh, a lady over there. Yeah. Yes. Listen. You're going to be. Apropos physically presence, um, angesichts dessen, dass die Hauptstädte sind nicht verbunden, also sind nicht erreichbar in direktem Flug, um, haben Sie ja vor, vielleicht die Möglichkeit zu schaffen, dass man zwischen den. Um Sorry? Ähm, zwischen Kassel und Athen fliegen kann. Sie, Sie haben gehört, dass wir, wir versuchen, das zu schaffen, zu erschaffen. Dass man kann zwischen Kassel und Athen fliegen kann. Also vielleicht eine Eule kann. Oder ich weiß nicht, also fragen Sie bitte bei Lufthansa. Oder ich meine, also, nein, also Lufthansa ist kein Partner von Dokumenta, also. Oder ja. Yes. Okay. That's fine. But no, the, the thing is that we, we have been, uh, you know, in the, because we, we try to, to make certain uh, gestures because we believe that the performative importance of, of, a, of a gesture actually creates facts. So if we say, for instance, that there is no flight connection between Kassel and Athens, it's a pretty absurd, um, it's a pretty absurd, um, you know, uh, proposition to not to establish one, but even to ask this question, like why there is no connect and why there is no connection between Kassel and, and uh, uh, Rio de Janeiro or Kassel and uh, you know anything else. So we are just insisting on on the necessity of creating connections, and if this connection is in, is in the form of a flugzeug that is painted like Documenta 14 and flies between Athens and Kassel a couple of times, I don't think that in this way we are contributing uh, massively to destruction of natural environment, you know? <laughs> so, yes, there, we are in negotiations. Yeah, I think the art... I thought the art of the question was a good example for us to thank you for the first time. First of all, by Herrn Schimczyk, our gift must be delivered. The first task of the Theology of Statistics is a classic of the Greek literature, the tax-free cities, as well as the political history of Greenland since the military dictator and the history of the... Überlebenden der Holocaust, Überlebenden von Thessaloniki, von Rika Benveniste. Die Bücher werden wir Ihnen nachliefern, die sind leider nicht fertig. An Sie, ja. an Sie meine sehr geehrten Damen und Herren, sehr vielen Dank für die Aufmerksamkeit und für die Fragen. Und wir freuen uns auf einen weiterhin anregenden Abend im Foyer bei einem Glas Wein und Brezel. Herr Simsek ist da, um weiterhin gefragt zu werden über Flüge oder nicht. Danke.